Hi there, I'm Callie from CoSchedule and welcome to the CoSchedule Getting Started course for those individuals who will be implementing CoSchedule for their marketing teams. This is the very first lesson and in this lesson you're going to learn about how to build your CoSchedule foundation in order to make sure your team gets started on the right foot. In this lesson you're going to learn three things. The first thing is how to use the home dashboard both for yourself and for your team. How to get started with the marketing calendar and also how to plan projects and campaigns in CoSchedule. So you've come to CoSchedule with the promise of completing more work, delivering more projects on time, and also proving the value of your marketing team. This lesson will walk you through how to lay the foundation for all these things in order to achieve the outcomes that we promised you when you first purchased CoSchedule. The first thing you're going to learn about is the home dashboard. The home dashboard is where you and your team will go to see your daily tasks and priorities. You can also stay up to date with the notifications feature to make sure everybody is in the know about comments and things that are happening in each project. You can also favorite projects in order to jump back in where you left off very quickly. I'm going to jump over to the CoSchedule calendar to show you the home dashboard in real life. Here is where you will see all of your daily tasks and priorities. If you need to remind yourself to complete a certain task, like respond to an email for instance, you can create a new task and this will be a private task to-do list which means that no one else on your team will be able to see the tasks you create from the home dashboard. On the right hand side here, you will see notifications. So whenever someone adds a new comment or marks the task as complete, you will be notified here. You can also see recent projects. So these are things that you have been recently working in. Or you can move over to your favorites. As a manager, this is a really important functionality because it allows you to favorite projects that are very important and it's the types of things that you want to stay on top of and make sure that the deadlines are being met and all of that. It's great for your team to be able to hop into their projects quickly in order to get things done as fast as possible. The next thing I'm going to talk about is the marketing calendar. This is kind of the backbone of all of your marketing strategy and all of your marketing planning. The main three things that the marketing calendar does is, first of all, it increases visibility into your marketing roadmap. It also serves as the blueprint so all of your team are in the know about different events, the content that is being planned, the social media messages that are going out, etc. It also allows you to see a bird's eye view of how every marketing project you are working on overlaps and supports all of your marketing goals at once. I'm going to pop back over to the co-schedule calendar so you can see the marketing calendar in real life. In order to find the marketing calendar from the home dashboard, click the marketing calendar option here. Here's a real life version of what the co-schedule calendar will look like once you start adding marketing projects, marketing, marketing campaigns, and social media messages. Your marketing calendar is made up of four things. Marketing projects, which are standalone items like tier sheets or sales slide decks that don't work towards a wider goal. A marketing campaign, which is a series of marketing projects that all work towards the same goal, like a product launch, for instance. They might have social media messages, emails, tear sheets, white papers, blog posts, and more. All of these things that work together towards accomplishing one goal. You'll see standalone social media messages, and you'll also see individual tasks on your calendar. Let's move back over to the calendar so I can show you what these look like. Once you start adding things to your calendar, you'll be able to see standalone marketing projects like this one. If you click in, you'll see an area to add attachments, like Google Docs, social campaigns, and other files. You'll see tasks and all that good stuff that you'll learn more about in future lessons. So we'll go ahead and cancel out of that project and move on to a marketing campaign. So here is an example of a marketing campaign in CoSchedule. If we open up that campaign, you'll see a mini calendar that consists of only the things that are tied to this campaign. This gives you an idea of email cadence, and it also gives you an idea of how much you have planned for this individual campaign. It increases visibility so you can make sure you're doing enough for that campaign in order to keep moving in the right direction. As you can see here, we have white papers, website contents, email marketing, and other things that are related to this project. And that's all that we have really going on for this specific campaign. Let's cancel out of this campaign and go back to our calendar. Here you will see tasks that are attached to each project or campaign, and you will also see social media messages. It gives you an idea of what is going on each day, and it gives you real-time visibility into all the things your marketing team is working on. There are some things you need to know about the calendar view and co-schedule, so I'm going to head back over to the co-schedule calendar now to click through each of these in order to help you navigate through the calendar view and co-schedule. 
The first thing we should talk about is the breadcrumb menu. This is where you can go to various save views, which you will learn more about in a future lesson. You can toggle down your name here to find calendar settings, profile settings, notification preferences, and more. You can also navigate to different areas of your calendar, such as the analytics tab or assets. The breadcrumb menu also allows you to go forward into various save views, which we will also talk about later. Or if you have other areas of the calendar or of co-schedule, such as the analytics or asset area, this allows you to move forward and backward between different parts of the application. We have our filters, display settings, and read-only sharing in the streamlined Save Views menu here. You'll learn a little more about Save Views in lesson number five. We have the data navigation here. You can toggle down to choose a specific date and you can move forwards and backwards in time by using these arrows. Or if you want to just jump quickly to today, you can click the little today button. The search is a really nifty functionality that allows you to quickly find projects based on keywords. So right here, I'm going to enter a keyword, and then you can find the project quickly that is attached to it. In order to create a project or campaign, you can use the Create button here, and you can also click on the little plus sign on a date to create a new project or campaign from a specific date. This is the Ideas bin. So as you think of new ideas or new content for your blog posts, etc., you can always add new ideas here. You can also see your recent and favorite projects and stay up to date on notifications here. The question mark is the support center. So if you have any questions about how to use a certain functionality in CoSchedule, you can find power tips here, or you can chat directly with a support agent in the calendar. The next thing we're gonna take a deeper dive into is how to plan a marketing project on your calendar. I'm gonna move back over to CoSchedule and show you. There are two ways, like we just mentioned, to create a new project. You can either use the orange create button or you can add a plus sign to the calendar on the calendar day. You'll see an option pop up that asks what type of thing that you're going to be creating. So I'm going to choose project because this is a test standalone marketing project and I'm going to give it a name. And I'm also going to give it a color label. But we'll talk more about color labels in lesson number two. Then use the arrow down to choose which type of project that you're creating. I'm going to say that this is a video and then I'm going to create the project. This is what the project will look like and it gives you an opportunity to add tasks which you'll learn more about later as well as different attachments. And now you will see this on your calendar. Next thing we're going to talk about is how to plan a marketing campaign. It works a very similar way, but it will create that standalone marketing calendar that gives you visibility into all of the projects that are attached to that campaign. So we'll go back over to the calendar, and this time I'm going to use the orange create button instead of the plus sign on a calendar date, and then choose campaign. I'm going to give it a name, which is test marketing campaign, and then I'm going to give it a color label. Campaigns are a little different than projects as you will have both start dates and end dates. This basically just tells you and your team how long the campaign will run for. So I'm going to say that this will run until the end of April. And then I will create the marketing campaign. This is that standalone marketing calendar that we talked about that is specific for the campaign. So now when you want to add projects to your campaign, you can just add the plus sign, Go to project, and then we'll do this one as test campaign project, and tell your team what it is. So we'll say that this is a blog post. So if we close out of this specific project, you will see it on that individual marketing campaign. So now if we close out of the campaign calendar, it will bring us back to our general marketing calendar. All right, we finished the first lesson in the CoSchedule Getting Started course. Thank you so much for joining us. In the next lesson, lesson number two, we will be talking about color labels and how to customize CoSchedule for better visibility.